In the last video, we looked at the pathology of prostate. We started with it. We have covered prostatitis, right? Now we want to look at nodular hyperplasia and carcinoma. Now let us move on to nodular hyperplasia of prostate. See, this can either be called as a BNH or a BEP or a BPH, okay? So it can be a BNH, a BPH or a BEP. So that will be a benign nodular hyperplasia, benign prostate hyperplasia or benign enlarged prostate. All of them are the same. The thing here it is, though they are using the word benign, it is not a tumor. It's a tumor-like situation. It is a non-neoplastic condition. Very important to note. It is benign, but it is not a tumor. You cannot use the word tumor. It's a tumor-like condition. It's a non-neoplastic. Okay? It is non-neoplastic. Now, here, uh, this actually occurs around the urethra. The prostate part, which is around the urethra, that is where this will occur more. If you remember from this diagram, this is the prostatic urethra. Around it, the benign prostatic hyperplasia will happen. Okay. Uh, hyperplasia means increase in the number of cells. Okay. Same cells, so many of them will be there. So, there will be increase in the number of cells and hence there will be compression of the urethra. So, there can be urinary There can be urinary tract obstruction. Okay. So, around the prostatic urethra, you it will uh, begin or it will be more there. Okay. This is a very common, this is a very common condition. Like in an 80 year old person, the chances of finding this is 80%. Okay. So, it is that common. So, it is important exam wise also. Prostate nodular hyperplasia is very important. Hyperplasia means what? Hyperplasia means increase in the number of cells. There will be no other abnormality. The cells will be more in number, that's all. Okay. There is no uh, dysplasia or etc. The cells are all normal and they are more in number, that's all. So, let us just see if you have covered all the points here. It is non-neoplastic condition. It's tumor-like. Uh, it is around the prostatic urethra. It is called by all these um, abbreviations. It is so common that an 80-year-old guy, 80-year-old uh, man, you will find it 80% of the time. Compr it compresses the prostatic urethra. Hence, there can be urinary tract obstruction. Reading this, what and all can uh, be involved? The glandular tissue can be involved or the fibromuscular tissue can be involved. Okay. Now, why does this happen? Why does this uh, prostate increase in size? Why See, let us go back to the histology and see something there in the cut section. The gross actually. This diagram, see. This is the urethra, prostatic urethra, right? Around it, this region is actually very, uh, it is sensitive to both estrogen and androgen. Okay, so it is called as the female part of the prostate. It is sensitive to both estrogen and androgen. However, the outer part is actually sensitive to androgen. It is the true male part, they will say. So now what happens as age increases, the androgen level comes down in the male. When the androgen level comes down and the estrogen level increases, this which is sensitive to estrogen, it will become more uh, hyperplastic, correct? It will, it will start dividing more and there will be hyperplasia. That is the reason for, for benign prostate hyperplasia, BPH, okay? So now let us move on to the gross. Okay, gross, let us look at the gross now. See, basically the prostate will be enlarged. That should be the first word. The prostate is enlarged. It weighs up to 40, it weighs from 40 to 80 grams. That is, the weight has increased 2 to 4 times because normal is what? 20 gram, correct? So, the weight has increased 2 to 4 times. It will be nodular and it will be smooth, okay? It will be firm. In the cut section, what you will see that there is a milky fluid exudate. As soon as you cut, you will see that milky fluid will exude. Okay. And there are two types of benign uh, enlargement of prostate, BEP. It is called as prime. primarily it can be glandular or primarily it can be fibromuscular. So, in primary glandular, if glands have had hyperplasia more, then it will be soft. If the muscular has more hyperplasia, definitely it will be firm. 
easy right in the morphology gross what we are looking at now in gross as one more point here the hyperplastic nodule forms a mass mainly in the inner periurethral prostatic gland so that the surrounding prostatic tissue forms a false capsule which enables the surgeon let me give you that information which enables the surgeon to enucle enucleate the nodular mass so basically there will be some kind of a formation of a false capsule around this hyperplastic nodule so that the it will help the surgeon to understand the nodular mass and remove it continuing the leftover peripheral prostatic tissue may sometimes undergo recurrent nodular enlargement or level up into carcinoma later so if you are going to leave the other prostatic tissue that might convert again into nodular enlargement or it can also develop into carcinoma so this is what we have covered in gross morphology of the benign prostatic hyperplasia fine now let us move on to microscopy let us uh, meet in the next video for microscopy